Chapter Twelve of Adeline Mowbray by Amelia Alderson Opie. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Pam Moscato. Chapter Twelve. In the meanwhile, Mr. Maynard, Miss Maynard, and Mrs. Wallington, his widowed sister, were impatiently expecting Glenmurray's answer and earnestly hoping to see him and his lovely companion, but from different motives. Maynard was impatient to see Adeline because he really admired her his sisters, because they hoped to find her unworthy of such violent admiration. Their vanity had been piqued, and their envy excited, by the extravagant praises of their brother, and they had interrupted him by the first questions which all women ask on such occasions. Is she pretty? And he answered, very pretty. Is she tall? Very tall, taller than I am. I hate tall women, replied Miss Maynard, a little round girl of nineteen. Is she fair? exquisitely fair. I like brown women, cried the widow. Fair people always look silly. But Mrs. Glenmurray's eyes are hazel, and her eyelashes long and dark. Hazel eyes are always too bold-looking, cried Miss Maynard. Not Mrs. Glenmurray's, for her expression is the most pure and ingenuous that ever I saw. Some girls, indecent in their dress, and very licentious in their manner, passed us as we sat on the walk and the comments which I made on them provoked from Mrs. Glenmurray some remarks on the behavior and dress of women. And as she commented on the disgusting expression of vice in women, and the charm of modest dignity both in dress and manners, her own dress, manners, and expression, were such an admirable comment on her words, and she shone so brightly, if I may use the expression, in the graceful awfulness of virtue, that I gazed with delight and somewhat of apprehension, lest this fair perfection should suddenly take flight to her native skies, toward which her fine eyes were occasionally turned. Bless me, if our brother is not quite poetical! This prodigy has inspired him, replied the widow, with a sneer. For my part I hate prodigies, said Miss Maynard. I feel myself unworthy to associate with them. When one woman calls another a prodigy, and expresses herself as unworthy to associate with her, it is very certain that she means to insult rather than compliment her. And in this sense Mr. Maynard understood his sister's words. Therefore, after having listened with tolerable patience to a few more sneers at the unconscious Adeline, he was provoked to say that ill-disposed as he found they were towards his new acquaintance, he hoped that when they became acquainted with her they would still give him reason to say, as they always had done, that he was proud of his sisters, for in his opinion no woman ever looked so lovely as when she was doing justice to the merits and extenuating the faults of a rival. A rival! exclaimed the sisters at once, and pray what rivalship should there be in this case? My remark was a general one, but since you choose to make it a particular one, I will answer to it as such, continued Mr. Maynard, all women are rivals in one sense, rivals for general esteem and admiration, and she only shall have my suffrage in her favor, who can point out a beauty or a merit in another woman without insinuating at the time a counterbalancing defect. But Mrs. Glenmurray, it seems, has no defects. At least I have not known her long enough to find them out. But you, no doubt, will, when you know her, very readily spare me that trouble. How injudiciously had Maynard prepared the minds of his sisters to admire Adeline. It was a preparation to make them hate her, and they were very impatient to begin the task of depreciating both her moral and physique when Glenmurray's note arrived. It is not Glenmurray's hand, said Maynard. Indeed, from agitation of mind, the writing was not recognizable. It must be hers, then, continued he, affecting to kiss the address with rapture. It is the hand of a sloven, observed Mrs. Wallington, studying the writing but in dress she is as neat as a Quaker, retorted the brother, eagerly snatching the letter back, and her mind seems as pure as her dress. He then broke the seal and read out what follows. Dear Maynard, when you receive this, Adeline and I shall be on our road to France, and you, start not, are the occasion of our abrupt departure. So, so jealous indeed, said Maynard to himself, and more impressed than ever with the charms of Adeline for he concluded that Glenmurray had discovered in her an answering prepossession. "'You the occasion, brother?' cried both sisters. "'Have patience. You saw Adeline, you admired her, and wished to introduce her to your sisters. This honor forbade me to allow.' The sisters started from their seats. "'For Adeline is not my wife, 
but my companion here maynard made a full pause at once surprised and confounded his sisters pleased as well as astonished looked triumphantly at each other and mrs wallington exclaimed so then this angel of purity turns out to be a kept lady at this remark miss maynard laughed heartily but maynard to hide his confusion commanded silence and went on with the letter but spite of her situation strange as it may seem to you believe me no wife was ever more pure than adeline at this passage the sisters could no longer contain themselves and they gave way to loud bursts of laughter which maynard could hardly help joining in but being angry at the same time he uttered nothing but an oath which i shall not repeat and retreated to his chamber to finish the letter alone during his absence the laughter redoubled but in the midst of it maynard re-entered and desired they would allow him to read the letter to the end the sisters immediately begged that he would proceed as it was so amusing that they wished to hear more glenmurray continued thus you have no doubt yet to learn that some few years ago i commenced author and published opinions contrary to the established usage of society amongst other things i proved the absurdity of the institution of marriage and adeline who at an early age read my works became one of my converts this man is certainly mad cried maynard and how dreadful it is that this angelic creature should have been his victim but perhaps this fallen angel brother for which you will allow she is spite of her purity was as wicked as he i know people in general only blame the seducer but i always blame the seduced equally i do not doubt it said her brother sneeringly and going on with the letter no wonder then that being forced to fly from her maternal roof she took refuge in my arms lucky dog but though adeline was the victim neither of her own weakness nor of my seductions but was merely urged by circumstances to act upon the principles which she openly professed i felt so conscious that she would be degraded in your eyes after you were acquainted with her situation though in mine she appears as spotless as ever that i could not bear to expose her even to a glance from you less respectful than those with which you beheld her last night i therefore prevailed on her to leave lisbon nor had i any difficulty in doing so when she found that your wish of introducing her to your sisters was founded on your supposition of her being my wife and that all chance of your desiring her acquaintance for them would be over when you knew the nature of her connection with me i shall now bid you farewell i write in haste and agitation and have not time to say more than god bless you f g yes yes i see how it is muttered maynard to himself when he had finished the letter he was jealous of me i wish raising his voice that he had not been in such a confounded hurry to go away why brother replied mrs wallington to be sure you would not have introduced us to this piece of angelic purity a little worse for the wear no replied he but i might have enjoyed her company myself and perhaps brother you might have rivalled the philosophic author in time observed miss maynard if i had not it would have been from no want of good will on my part returned maynard well then i rejoice that the creature is gone replied mrs wallington drawing up and i too said miss maynard disdainfully but i think we had better drop this subject i have had quite enough of it and so have i cried mrs wallington but i must observe before we drop it entirely that when next my brother comes home and wearies his sisters by exaggerated praises of another woman i hope he will take care that his goddess or rather his angel of purity does not turn out to be a kept mistress so saying she left the room and miss maynard tittering followed her while maynard too sore on this subject to bear to be laughed at took his hat in a pet and flinging the door after him with great violence walked out to muse on the erring but interesting companion of glenmurray end of chapter twelve recording by pam moscato